Okay, so the unit starts with, with the question, Big Australia. How do we plan for a big Australia? At this point, the students aren't going to have any idea what we're talking about. Uh, so we'll move from there to domestic and international migration. So the concept will be, we'll say, well, why are we going to have a big Australia? And we'll use the class as an example. So they're going to come up with their personal migration stories based on their family. Um, this is my parents moved here or my great my grandparents moved here for these reasons, and this is when they did it. Uh, then, um, they will put on haiku, and as a class, we'll look through the class, and we'll build a snapshot of migration from the, the class point of view, and we'll try and kind of extrapolate that out and say, well, if that's happened here in the class, what's gonna happen with Australia? So we'll look at some stats, Australia's growing, there's a whole bunch of migration happening. That will move from migration, uh, which is international, and we'll talk about the fact that not only do people moving from overseas move to the big cities rather than rural areas, but we've also got people from rural areas moving to the cities as well. So that'll move us over to urbanisation. So what we'll say to them is, for their big question of how they're going to plan for Australia's future, why don't we look at examples from other countries in the past and learn from the mistakes that they've made? So we'll look at, in group work, We'll give them a chosen city, Sao Paulo, or however you say it, um, Tokyo, etc. Places like that, big mega cities, and see how they urbanise. They'll create an infographic, which will look at the causes of that urbanisation and the consequences. Things like, were there slums? Is there spatial inequality? How big is the urban footprint of the city? Uh, then, once they've created their infographics as a class, we'll do a quick case study of India with Mumbai being the chosen city and look at the causes of urbanisation to Mumbai and the consequences, the huge slums there. That will lead us to looking at questions of, well, if that's the case, how do we kind of deal with it? How do we make sure that the worst excesses, the worst consequences of urbanisation don't occur? And that gets us into settlement patterns. So thinking out, well, okay, if there's growth in the city, how do we plan it out so that infrastructure keeps pace with uh, people moving in, with uh, how do we ensure that the people are able to live well within the city, so they have access to all the services they need, uh, they're not causing too much of a problem with spatial inequality, people taking up too much land, etc., etc. transport, employment, where that, that is. That'll lead us to Barangaroo. So we'll be able to look at Barangaroo uh, on excursion and the concept of how that's changed. We've got uh, kind of a growth area, then stagnation leading to, um, what's the one after that? Renewal. And then eventually renewal, gentrification, etc. And a government plans kind of part, private part governments kind of um, partnership for a high end casino, um, parkland open to the public access, restaurants, and really high end apartments there at Barangaroo. So we'll look at all of that and kind of see how development takes place and the processes that occur and that will eventually get us over here to Australia's urban future. So then we'll be able to look at and talk about, okay, well, if these things occurred, these processes occurred in India and Mumbai and in your chosen city, and if we're looking at Sydney and some of the issues that Sydney's had in the past, well then, what happens in the future? The students then will be able to finish the unit by looking forward and start predicting what Australia will look like, what Sydney will look like, what New South Wales will look like, we use the intergenerational report as well, and they'll have to then answer questions with, well, how do we build a sustainable future? How do we creatively deal with issues um, like transport, um, infrastructure needs, employment issues and things like that? And hopefully the students will be able to use all the lessons they've had from the previous part of the unit to create their own plan for Australia's future. That's the unit.